I don't know if you guys heard or not, but America's having a big election pretty soon, so I thought it would be a perfect time to escape from that horrific reality by talking about the ReZero election instead. There are five candidates competing to become the 42nd King of Lagunica, Emilia, Priscilla, Anastasia, Krush, and Felt. I'm going to be talking about their politics and deciding which candidate I would vote for by the end of the video, so feel free to let me know in the comments who you would vote for, and remember to actually vote in real life if your country is having an election. But let's go ahead and start with Krush Karsten, who I thought was probably the most qualified candidate, at least as of season one. She was well acquainted with the members of the royal family before they died, so it would make sense for Krush to be the one to carry out their wishes. Her divine protection of wind reading tells her when someone's lying to her, so that would make her a formidable negotiator as well. She seemed like she would make a strong, honorable, and firm leader who wanted to make the kingdom a better place. Her approach to political philosophy reflected an idea where citizens would be compensated on the basis of their individual effort and ability. It sounds alright on paper, but like all political philosophies, it has its flaws as well. I hope that you become a great ruler, the kind of dictator who abandons the weak. Under Krush's leadership, not everyone would be born with the same opportunities, and the lives of the underprivileged wouldn't really improve, so her ideology wasn't perfect, but it was what she truly believed was best for the kingdom, so you've got to give her credit for at least trying. However, Krush also had a selfish desire as well. The dragon still upholds its duty to protect us. It was in the royal family's contract, and must be honored till it's fulfilled. Wait a sec. I vow, the dragon will forget its demanded covenant. The dragon's empire of Lagunica belongs not to that beast, but to its people. She wanted to sever the kingdom's ties with the divine dragon due to a personal experience from her childhood. This was also something she believed would benefit the kingdom overall, but to me, it felt more like a personal grudge. I don't know, if you've read the first EX novel, we can talk about it in the comments section. But obviously guys, as we saw in the first episode of season two, Krush Karsten's memories were sadly eaten and her personality changed a lot as a result. In fact, Krush is pretty much a different person entirely, so I'm wondering if her political beliefs have changed as well, and I'd like to know if she still wants to cut ties with the dragon. But because of what happened to her, I'd say for now, it's probably best to consider some of the other candidates. However, I don't think Miss Karsten would be a bad choice overall, especially compared to some of the other options. Anastasia Hoshin is the head of the Hoshin Trading Company from Kararagi. She's a successful businesswoman and seems to be a relatively honest person. But during negotiations, Anastasia tries to stay at least a couple steps ahead of the other party and tends to be a bit manipulative in order to achieve the outcome she's pursuing. So theoretically, she'd be able to bring great success to Lagunica by using these tactics against outsiders and the other kingdoms. Plus, her Kararagian roots would help with foreign policy and her business has has the potential to improve Lagunica's economy. However, the reality is Anastasia is a very selfish person. I'm a greedy little gal, so I want everything. No amount of commercial success can satisfy me. I want to have my very own nation! She just wants to make as much money as possible and doesn't really care if it's at the expense of the less fortunate. She would expand the Hoshin Trading Company to Lagunica and dominate the marketplace, effectively creating a monopoly and putting a lot of others out of business. The economy might improve overall, but most of the benefit would go to the upper class and people like the APA salesmen would suffer in exchange. Plus, if the Hoshin Trading Company became too large, it would harm the economy and a lot of the citizens would have to either starve or work for Anastasia. She's not the best candidate to vote for and we'd probably never see her tax returns, but she's still still isn't the worst option. Priscilla Bariel was born with extraordinarily good luck, as you can see. But that's about the only positive thing I have to say about her. Priscilla believes that the world was made to favor her and sees everyone else as peasants. In fact, until Subaru showed her one, she had never seen an appa that wasn't already peeled for her. She's had multiple husbands in the past, all of whom ended up passing away mysteriously. As for her qualifications, it seems that she would be a better fit as the Empress of Wallachia, but regardless, a kingdom ruled by Priscilla would absolutely be a totalitarian state. Under her leadership, if you can even call it that, you'd be able to expect a completely regressed society full of brand new laws that would benefit only one person. 
Priscilla is self-centered, openly racist, dangerously prideful, and just utterly terrifying. She would control the public by fear and by force and wouldn't hesitate to dispose of anyone that doesn't obey her. All you people need to do is just grovel before my feet and serve me! Without a doubt, the citizens would quickly form rebellions and the kingdom would likely fall into a war between the people and the government. But whatever the result of that war may be, a lot of people are gonna die if she's elected. Priscilla would be the absolute worst choice out of all five candidates, and no one in the right mind should ever consider voting for her unless you want to kiss her feet for the rest of your life. Fuck, I shouldn't have said that. Now she's gonna win. Felt didn't even want to participate in the election in the first place. I never as a result of living most of her life in the slums, Felt despises nobility and wants to abolish the government entirely, leaving the kingdom in a state of anarchy. Felt would relieve everyone of their power and wealth and force them to live the way she has in the past. Now whether or not the people of the kingdom deserve this is up for debate, but anarchy would only work in Lagunica if all the citizens were committed to peace, honesty, and organization. And that just isn't realistic, especially with ReZero's large capacity capacity for villains. Felt's policies would benefit practically no one except for the very lowest of the bottom class. By eliminating the concept of property, the only people who would benefit would be the ones that already had nothing to begin with. This would obviously lead to violence almost immediately and a lot of death would ensue. However, with no government, there technically isn't any laws prohibiting murder and theft, so the true winners under Felt's leadership would be the strong. The weak would die out and the strong would get rich. It would be a complete disaster and there would be conflict at every turn, but surprisingly, Felt might actually have the most legitimate claim to the throne. I doubt anyone would actually vote for her, but they might not have to. In Lagunica, blonde hair and red eyes is a sign of having royal blood. This combination is very rare, but for some reason Felt's appearance matches it perfectly. On top of that, the insignia chose Felt for some reason, which further implies that she has some claim to the throne. If she is indeed the last surviving member of the royal family, then she should win the election by default. However, because the entire royal family is dead, it would be incredibly difficult to prove that Felt is actually related to them. But even if Felt is the rightful heir to the throne, voting for her would be a terrible, terrible mistake. And that leaves us with Amelia, the main heroine of my favorite anime. Amelia is a silver-haired half-elf who's been discriminated against her entire life. But despite how she's treated by others, Amelia is still one of the most kind-hearted characters in the entire series. Her goal is to create a future where everyone is treated equally, regardless of social status, race, and blood. I have only one wish, equality for everyone. I desire to create a nation where all citizens are equal. Now this would, without a doubt, cause a lot of conflict between the lower and upper classes. The working people would support this idea, but the knights and nobility would strongly oppose it. There's also a lot of racism in Lagunica, especially considering the demi-human war was less than 50 years ago, so the racist community wouldn't be very fond of this idea either. Equality for everyone would end segregation and give demi-humans the same rights as full humans, plus Amelia is a demi-human herself, so I highly doubt the racist people will vote for her. Amelia would also most likely end the monarchy altogether and transition Lagunica towards a more democratic government rather than one where the ruler alone makes all the decisions. Ending the monarchy is probably the safest option in the long run because, I mean, eventually the ruler is gonna be someone like Priscilla, so I think it would be best to take her power away before she even has the opportunity to abuse it. But anyway, Amelia being elected would pretty much start a revolution. Her policies would change the lives of basically everyone, and there would definitely be a lot of resistance at first. Probably some death and violence as well, but in the end, Lagunica would have a brighter future thanks to Amelia. But Amelia does have selfish motives as well, and she's humble enough to admit that. I realize. I'm participating in the royal selection for selfish reasons too. I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm just gonna say that something happened in her past and she believes that becoming the ruler of the kingdom is the only way to fix it. So there are some personal goals that Amelia is hoping to fulfill as well, but she does truly believe that equality for all would be the best future for Lagunica. 
Emilia has good intentions, but electing her would be a gamble. I think Krush would be the safest choice if you want to avoid conflict within the kingdom, while Emilia would lead Lagunica towards the best possible future, but would essentially start a revolution and potentially even a war. Anastasia would be another safe option, but I don't think she'd be the best leader for everyone. Felt is only appealing to a very small percentage of the population, and Priscilla is only appealing to herself. So, I'm gonna lock in my answer. I am voting for Amelia. Yeah, let's start a revolution. I believe in Amelia. I think she can do it. It'll take a lot of preparation and precautions to make sure the transition of power is peaceful, but I have faith in Amelia. I think Amelia will lead the kingdom down the best path. We might have some conflict and maybe some sacrifices made along the way, but I think it'll be worth it in the end. Now, obviously, if Otto was running, I'd vote for him by default, but let me know who you guys would vote for. I read all the comments, so I'm curious to see who you guys would pick. Also, if you haven't seen the Lust If video, click the link in the description to see what would happen if Subaru was the king of Lagunica. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video, keep talking about ReZero, I'm out for now, peace.